Ephesians chapter 3 in verse 14 this is the Pauline prayer for the church he said for this cause I bow my knees unto the father of our Lord Jesus Christ of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named verse 16 this is a prayer this is Paul praying for the Ephesian church that he will grant according to the riches of his grace to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man this is what we want to pray about we want to pray that we will be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man can we go ahead and believe god for that today let's go ahead and pray let's go ahead and pray father in the name of the lord jesus christ that we will be strengthened with might by the spirit in the inner man we'll be strengthened with might by the spirit in the inner man we'll be strengthened with might by the spirit in the inner man father that's our prayer today for everyone for myself for everyone oh god that will be strengthened with might by the spirit in the inner man in jesus mighty name in jesus name we pray amen job chapter 29 verse 1 it says moreover job continued this parable and said all that i wear as in the month past as in the day so job was talking about his condition before bad things happened to him it says all that i wear in the month past as in the days when the lord preserved me it's a prayer of thanksgiving and it's also a prayer and this is a prayer number one number one that the lord will preserve me hallelujah listen to me many of you there are great things happening in your life all you need is for god to preserve it all you need is for god to what preserve it some of you it's a you're pregnant you want god to preserve that some of you have a project you want god to preserve that some of you have married you want god to preserve it. your children hallelujah hallelujah that God will preserve it. Can you believe that? Yeah. Let's, let's, let's go ahead and pray. Let's go ahead and pray. Oh man, they call Rabba Shabbaya. Let that go for Rabba Shabbara de Lira de Gorra de Braco, those the Braco. Let the element of Gorra de Siska, the Red of the Doskis. Let the Red of the Gorra de Siska, the Red of the Doskis. Let the Braco de Siska, the Red of the Red of the Doskis. Let the Braco de Siska, in jesus name we pray amen and the last prayer point is very powerful is the next verse verse three very powerful the bible says in verse three it says the lord preserved me verse two verse three says and this candle shined upon my head Hallelujah. that's so powerful Hallelujah. just imagine someone says the candle of lord shined upon my head that means his intelligence was heightened he says that and when by his light i walked through darkness the effect of his candle shined upon my head was this even though things were tough i was able to find Hallelujah. my path i walked through darkness yes. you're going to pray that the candle of the lord will shine hey, upon my, my head that the candle of the lord will shine upon my head go ahead and pray father thank you in the name of the lord jesus because the candle of the lord will shine upon my head and give me light in darkness in the name of the lord jesus christ and father i give you praise and glory that the candle of the lord shines upon on my head and it's giving me light and darkness in the name of the Lord Jesus. Legemen Sonte, Legemen Sonte, Legemen Sonte, Mangate, Rebatoske, Regadish, Lebrando, Crante, Brande, Kurva, Sambro, Gadia, Ebronske, Bronske, Brande, Lebrande, Ketora, Bia. In Jesus' name we pray. You know in all of the services i made this illustration i said have you seen someone that has a skinny coat and light shines on their head what will you see you will see the light you will not see the hair again when the light of god shines on you they don't see you all they see is the hand of god Hallelujah. that's my prayer for Hallelujah. you today that in the name of the lord jesus christ yes, lord. that the light of god will shine on everything you do amen they will not see you they will see the hand of god 
in the name of Jesus Christ Amen. this will be your story today Amen. in Jesus name we pray Amen. Amen praise the Lord Amen. I mean, let me look at two or three people. Welcome them to church. Say hello to them and you can go ahead. Look at two or three people. Welcome them. Say hello to them and you can go ahead and have your seat. Hello, my friends by the corner here. Are you well? Are you well? My friends by the corner here. Are you well? Really good. It's a long time I've seen you in church though. Are you okay? Really good. Really good. Really good. Really good. Are you together? Oh, just, you know, okay. Is she the one? Are you together? Okay. The way you guys sat together, I thought you were together. And the brother with the full braids on. How long have you been keeping the air? Two years. Oh, let me see. Come, let me see. Okay, don't worry, don't worry. You look shy already. You look shy already. Praise the Lord. It, it's a bit warm, and the reason is that because we've not done the gallery, we've not been able to put the air conditioners on it, you know. So before next week, we're going to find a way to make sure that we can have, um, you know, we can have more conditionals, you know, serving the downstairs. So the reason why there meant to be more conditional pouring from the top, and that will make it cooler. But we've not been able to do that because um, because the gallery is going to carry about six hundred or five hundred people. We need to make it very strong. So it needs to the cement needs to cure and just do some testing to make it good. Amen, amen. So you know, I just want to explain that to you. Hallelujah. Amen. But it's great to know you're committed to Christ and heat does not affect you, you know, has nothing on you. You know, it's great to know that. So I'm glad. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Choir, how are you doing today? We're good, right? Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. So July the 1st, what's happening July the 1st? And help you London. Do you have the video? Do you have the video of the testimonies from Hilda in the third service and the first service? Do you have it? I saw it posted on social media. They should be able to get it though. Tell me, let me ask them. You know, yeah. I said posted on social media, so. Okay, so, you know, um, we have wonderful testimonies today. Um, Osans testified in the second service. She, she won um, AV, AVMC. A M M A A M V C A. Yeah, she won A M V Z A. And all of you, what? She won something, praise God. Yeah, so she gave a testimony. She won the best actress. Um, I think, it, do you have the picture on? Yeah, she won it. They're going to post it. Hilda, our great chef, was here in the third service testifying to the goodness of the Lord. It's just amazing to see. Yeah, that, that's us as, you know, just thanking God for that, for winning that, you know. You know, I'm grateful because God is answering prayers and showing up. And uh, do you have the video for Hilda? Do you have it? Get it. Yeah. Get it. Get it from the social media team. Because I saw them post it somewhere. Quickly, and you have to do it fast. Two minutes. You know, praise the Lord. July the 1st, what's going on? No, all of you that have large social media following and you're not posting NLP London, you're doing the wrong thing. Yeah, people like Nene. Nene, why are you talking to her in church, you know? Nene, everybody knows you're dating. So you didn't need to make it obvious that you're dating right now. Because the way you're like, I have a boyfriend right now. She knows that already. Praise the Lord. No, some people can't date quietly. They have to make it known like, oh, the Lord is good all the time. Jesus is faithful, is kind. You know. And I like your shoes, by the way. I wonder we'll give them to you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay, we'll give them the shoes. Let's just so. take the microphone. You can me. You can go back to your seat. Sit down. They'll, they'll capture you. They'll they capture the shoes also. Yeah. I, I, so let's start. I like the shoes. Oh, wow. They look really nice. Thank you, sir. Who gave them the shoes? Who gave the shoes? My father, my father. PB gave me the shoes. Um, oh, I, I gave you the shoes? Yes, you <laughs> did, sir. That. I didn't even know that. <laughs> I didn't even know that. 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So that was part of our 30 days of generosity. You know, she has all these nice Adidas shoes on that she's using to oppress her boyfriend. Oh my God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, so July the 1st, um, we have Next Level Prayer Conference in the UK. And I'm, the reason I'm saying so is that um, a lot of you have relations, friends, or fans in the UK. This week, I wanted to post it and invite them. Two things I want I want to post it. I wanted to what, invite them on your social media and tell, hey, all my friends, come. So, a lot of you that have huge media followings, like some of you here, you can do that and you can, you know, you can, a lot of you have huge, sometimes I see you follow me with all these large numbers. So, you can go ahead and, you know, post it this week. Is that good? Yeah. And if you want, now this is the invitation, if you want to invite people personally to join Next Level Prayer Conference in the UK, raise up your hands. There's an ebook I want to send to you if you want to do that. You know, if you want to do that, the ushers have a card, they will capture your card, put your email there, we'll send you the ebook as soon as it is out. And we can add, okay, let's go ahead and do it. So let's go ahead. I want to invite my friends to the Next Level Prayer Conference in the UK. Yeah. Yeah. Wave your hands, let me see. Yeah, just wave your hands. Put your hands above you. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, that brother in glasses. That's so kind. Yeah. Anybody from the right hand side, you want to invite your friends to the next level prayer conference in the UK? Yeah. Have I me? Doesn't your girlfriend want to invite someone or you want to invite someone? What? You want to? Okay. Because I was you were not raising up your hands. So I wanted to ask you. You want to invite someone? But I if I didn't want any Thanksgiving today. Okay. Yeah, because I know that I saw. Yeah, thanks. I want to invite someone to the next level prayer conference in the UK. Let's 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 appreciate them as they do that. Let's have, that's really good. That's really good. Yeah, all of you in the choir. You don't know people in the UK. You don't know in the village. Just asking. I'm not saying that's what it is. Is it only in the village? You know people because I know that you guys are international and you have people in the UK. Exactly. So choir people. I want to invite people. Raise up your hands. Let them say give you cards. You know, except all of you that just know only people in the village. They can put on your hands. Praise the Lord. Which is not true. Praise so If you want to invite people in the UK, yeah, just raise up here. Thank you. That's like, okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you. Yeah, I want to invite my friends in the UK. Yeah. Of course, you can invite them without filling the card, but filling the card, you know, gives you the opportunity to get my ebook also. So there are many people in the choir here, you know, and they're just like, there are a lot more in the choir here that needs to do that, you know. So all of them want to invite people in the UK. Let's quickly do that. Okay. Have you all gotten the cards? Anybody that wants to invite their friends? I'm not gotten the card. Just wave your hands one more time. Oh, there are few persons. Why do I have just like one or two persons doing this? Can we have more persons doing this, please? Are we running out of cards? Yeah. Really good. We have more people in front that are raising up your hands. We have all of these beautiful sisters in front that are raising up their hands. Yeah, just about three of them. I want to invite my friends in the UK. And he has friends in the UK, but doesn't want to invite them. Yeah. Why don't you want to invite your friends? They don't go to church, they go to club. Yeah. Because there's literally nobody that I know that doesn't have one person in the UK. Praise the Lord. So this week, we're all going to post it. Spiral, you're going to post it. Either you like it or not, three times this week, you know. But Spiro is always vocal about his faith. That, that's why I'm always like always leaning into him. I don't like people that they come to worship God in church, they can't talk about it on social media. Mm? They hide their God, but they want their God to show them forth. You hide your God, but you want your God to show you forth. But God is kind, sure. I'm grateful I'm not God. Praise God. All right. So the last thing will be our business acceleration. Do you have the video right now? Okay. The last thing will be, do you have it or you're working on it? You have it. You're working on it. Okay. So the business acceleration course, um, it, you've heard testimonies of people that their businesses have really, really improved. So we have this course for two days in June, Friday and Saturday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. in the evening. In the course, you get to meet people that can really help you to your business. You get mentoring. You get the opportunity to raise funding for your business. Some of you, 5 million, 10 million, 5 million, that kind of thing. 
So you have to attend the course. It's called the Business Acceleration Course. It teaches about marketing. It's, it's not a church program like that. It's just our church is hosting it because I feel as if a lot of you are in the place in your life where you want, you are starting something, you are growing something. The, 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 um, the course is, um, is good. It's, it's on the screen. I think it's about 200,000 naira. Uh, 200,000 naira. And someone said, why is it that expensive? Basically, because we want to make sure that people that are not meant to be there will not be there. Number two, we want to make sure that you value it. Number three, the quality of the people. You're going to have proper meals in those days you come. You know, so that's it. You can want to register. And if you need some kind of scholarship, which is for a few people, you can also apply. I think it's half scholarship. You have to pay like maybe, maybe 100,000 or 120 and they pay 80,000, like 50, 50, something like that. So apply why the scholarship, you know, and all of that. Praise God. All right. Let's turn our Bible to First Samuel chapter 30. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. All right. First Samuel chapter 30. And we're going to continue our discussion on overcoming depression. Now, some of you are here with family members and you're here for the first time. Um, this month in our church, we've been teaching overcoming depression. I'm going to start with Charles. And Charles, you're going to tell me any point in your life where you've gone through severe depression. You know, where you've gone through severe depression. Yeah. So we're going to start with Charles. So the service for some of you will be very different, but it will bless you either way. Yeah, Charles. Yes, go this way. Calibi, over here. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So Charles, have you been through depression before? Yes. You've been through depression before? That's amazing because someone of your size and, you know, your swag. So will you tell me something? What led to your depression and how did you cope with it? in 2008 my warehouse in the u.s got bombed your warehouse in the u.s got bombed yeah. wow so i lost goods worth almost three hundred thousand dollars three hundred thousand dollars wow because that's a lot of money i was about loading them to bring them to nigeria well what i was about loading them to bring them to nigeria for sale and the whole warehouse engulfed in fire I was invited by the police, and after everything, I don't know where to turn. I was really depressed. So I came back to Nigeria, put myself together, and hit the road again. What did you tell yourself when you were going through that tough season? What did you tell yourself? I just want to really know. I kept on encouraging myself. How did you encourage yourself? How did you find the strength to encourage yourself? The reason why is that you lost over 200 million, just like that. There are people that have lost five million and they cannot recover. I know we have different financial capacity, but what will you tell someone that's lost five million and cannot recover? Yes, please. Number one, I had cheap labels working for me, and I prayed. I thank God that none of them got burnt up in fire. That's very powerful. And being non-citizen, running a business in the U.S., it was a major problem for me with the cops and the state of Philadelphia. So when I came back to Nigeria, I picked up the courage. My father prayed along and I tried to pick up the pieces and said, God is in control. I'm a blessed child. I was dedicated at the altar of God. I should be able to pull through. Praise God. So that happened 2000 and what? Eight. This is many years after. Looking back, what do you have to say? Very, very you're very grateful. Praise God. If you didn't tell me that, I would have never known that story about yourself because I, I think your business is doing so well. All right. So we're talking about overcoming depression. And let me tell you why I'm teaching about this. Just to backtrack a little. One of the things you must know about depression is that depression changes people. I've seen people, I've seen people, you know, I don't know if this ever happened to you. When you were younger, did you have friends and be like, this guy will be a star? You, you look into this guy and recently not too long ago i met some of those people again and they were completely different and when you hear the story what happened to them was that life happened and the truth is that as i'm saying this some of you are listening to me nothing just life happened you went through a terrible divorce you went through a terrible abuse you went through a terrible separation or maybe you prayed and prayed and prayed for something and it never happened and 
somehow that thing got into your spirit and broke you down broke you down in a way that you finally had to recover you know sometimes i meet people and people say that i never want to marry again when people tell me that i don't buy it you know why because at the deep heart at, within the core of their being they really want to be married but the difference is this they've gone through so much a downward state they've given up on that dream and in order not to make themselves hope for something that will not happen they just say i don't want it they really want it but they don't know how to have it but the worst thing about depression is that you will see happy people excited people become very sad become very you know what I mean? they just change and I'm saying so because it's good to talk about this in terms of somebody else. But there are people in this service that you are a shadow of yourself because of what you went through. You don't even believe in yourself again. You don't even, you know, there's a way, you don't even have that zest for life because of what you went through. And that's why today we're talking about coming out of depression. Because that's not a place you want to be. That's not a place you want to be. I always say this. I said this in the end of services. I said, the purpose of the devil in depression is to poison you so that they can poison your soul and destroy your future. You have the goal. It's, see, all the things that, mat that happen to you is not really called. It's your soul. It's a battle for the soul. It's what? It's a battle for your soul. He wants to put in that poison inside so that you can become negative. You know why? Once you become negative, you now begin to say things like, things don't work, this doesn't do well, that doesn't do well, this doesn't do well, that doesn't do well. You begin to say things like this. Glory to God. Who knows what I'm talking about? Yeah. Who wants to share a story about how depression changed you? Maybe it changed your friend, changed you, changed somebody. Anybody here? Anybody here? You want to say something? The lady in red? What? Yes. Okay. If you give her a microphone, lady in red. Hallelujah. I went through depression sometime in 2018. Okay. Um, I had so much immigration issues. I had job problems. Um, I had been served breakfast from every angle possible. And, you know, at that point, I came to a point where I hated God. Because... I now, want to see her depression. She began to blame God for a problem. You, you see what I'm saying? Let me tell you why depression is very powerful. I know people that were very prayerful that stopped praying because of problems. Yes or no? Depression entered. And, and I'm glad that... What's your name, sir? Ma'am? My name is Chioma. Chioma, yeah. How did God help me? So when you were depressed, how are you? You stopped, you stopped praying? Ah, I was always sad. I didn't want to hang out. I was what they described as major depressive disorder. Um, recurrent. That's what the DSM calls it. That's what the DSM calls it. So, you know, for all of us that are not that educated, just break it down, what it looked like, so you know. It's, I had no energy. You had no energy. What does that mean? You, you, you will not just go to work. I didn't, I didn't go out. I laid on my couch all day. I didn't take showers. I you will lay on your couch all day. All day. You didn't even care if you stunk. Nope. Nope. I didn't let anyone in my house. When people called me, I didn't answer the phone. I would let my battery die. I didn't, I didn't talk you, to people. You were dying on the inside, literally. I was. I was. And, you know, whenever I turned on my TV and I saw anything that had to do with God, I would turn it off. You, you, how were you with God? You were angry with God or what, what were you? <laughs> if, <laughs> no words. Like, no words at all for God. What did you feel that God was doing to you? You, you felt that God was unfair to you. You felt that same. What did you feel exactly? I felt like he brought me, he took me to a high place and just threw me down. You know, like, that's what I felt. Like, why should I go through this? You felt anger and rage. Yes, like, why, why are you letting me go through this? But today I'm grateful because that was the story he needed from me. Oh, wow. You know, God, God did that to me and at the end of the day, he took me back to school to go be a psychiatrist, to help people. 
so I can use my story and someone sitting on the other side of the chair, I can look at them and tell them, I've been there before and I didn't come out of it through school. I came out of it because of God. I'm not just a provider that knows about mental health. I'm a faith-based provider. That's who I am. Why in Maryland? Silver um, Spring, Columbia? Close to Silver Spring. Where? So I live, I live in Prince George's County. Oh, Prince George's County. Yes. Oh, good. And um, shout out to Chuma. Chuma said I needed to be here today to speak. You know, it, it's the way we that came from Maryland. We just like this. They don't even know where Prince George's County is. <laughs> and, you know. All of you online from Maryland, we're, we're just like, you know, <laughs> I'm from Columbia. <laughs> You never understand that Colombia is a place in Maryland. That's what I'm saying. I'm not from Colombia, you know, country. I'm from Colombia and Maryland. Yeah. And, you know, it, it means a lot to me because I went through depression. I went through anxiety. I went through suicidal ideation. Yes, I was that girl who was on the 10th floor and was ready to jump off. Mm. And today I can use my story and say God took me back to school. And he didn't only take me back to school. He brought me out. And That's he said, great. You know what? I want you to not just be Chioma. I want you to be known as Chioma, the faith-based provider. And tell people there's medicine, there's therapy, but you know God. You know, I, thank you. Thank you, Chioma. That's powerful. You know, I told you something. I said once your pain finds a purpose, it becomes less painful. Has our pain found a purpose right now? Did you see that? She's not talking from a place of deprivation. She's talking from a place of advancement. Praise God. Thank you for sharing that. Someone else wants to share the story quickly. Someone else wants to share that story of, you know, how things were really down and, you know. Yes, there's a lady over there. Yeah, there's a lady over there. Yes, go ahead and share. I think you've passed that. Yeah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, I was in a seven years relationship seven years and we kind of got engaged what is it i was in a seven years relationship so along the line we got engaged i got pregnant he didn't want it and he asked me to abort it and the family i'm coming from we are kind of christian christian i don't believe in abortion all those stuff and my family are very like my dad is a very authoritative man so i have to go home explain to my mom by god's grace my mom understood my dad disowned me. So I was treated horribly, like the guy left. Even there was a time they, they learned that it's the baby is going to be two, like twins. Then I came back to marry me. But instead of hearing, you know, what kind of introduction, how you're supposed to be, then the parents came and were like, my son said that he doesn't want to marry me. And moreover, we broke up six months ago. That was the one that carried myself to seduce him just to tie him down in front of my people. You know how introduction used to be? Your wow. Your family, your uncles, and everything. So in, in the introduction, you know, sometimes when people share pain, you know that your pain is of a lesser degree, even though it's important to you. Just imagine it's a public disgrace. In front of both families, our in-laws to be said that you intentionally seduced our son. And most likely it's a material gain thing. You accuse her that she's a field seeker. You know, she, she seduced the son. And got pregnant because she wanted to gain something. And tell me how you dealt with that. How did you feel throughout this time? I don't know how to explain it. But my family, my parents, my dad disowned me. My siblings treated me. Your dad disowned me. you? Yes. I was beaten like a... You were beaten? Yes. Physically? Yes, I was. With your pregnancy? Yes, I was. But anytime I want to, you know, laugh with my siblings to play, and they were like, you should go and hide. You're supposed to be ashamed of yourself and all that. Wow. So I would just go upstairs in my room just to sleep, just to cry, and you know, I'd be like, no, the baby didn't do me anything. I would just come downstairs and do my stuff. So I gave birth... 220 June, but the baby died. 
So that's the most painful part of everything. So I lost my car. I was studying nursing. Along the line, I kind of, my dad was a lecturer there. He had to transfer me to another department. So I lost everything that year. And it was a, a very abusive relationship. So I was crying. Have you ever cried in a way that your chest is paining? You don't know what to do. I decided to commit suicide. So I took so many pills, but it didn't work. I started crying. I told God that, show me a way, just a way, and I will live without looking back. Not two hours, you know, to that uh, prayer, my friend called me, so I should come to Lagos. So I came to Lagos. So people are like, Lagos is a very big place. They're not going to get you a job. And I was doing my clearance and know that I've not yet collected my certificate. I told them that it's not going to be by might, by power. It's not going to be by qualification, but by the grace of God. So I came to Lagos on 6th January. I got the job without a certificate. So um, on last two weeks, the company gave me a car. So, I don't know about that prayer. I thought that prayer, and I thought God don't know my name, doesn't listen to me. So I, I wanted to notice this is what the reason why is that if you begin to feel as if God hates you, God doesn't know your name, you know the path you're on in the depressive lane. Continue, man. So I told God that I'm the last person on the line. There are so many people that are faithful, they are fasting, they are praying. Can you look at me? I'm Chinasa. I'm, at the last, I'm the last person on the line. Can you see me? Just give me a way out. And that's how it is. Wow. That's so touching. And how do you feel now? I feel good. I feel blessed. I feel... I, feel, I felt like it, it felt like a dream because... What did you learn through this whole process? If you could... If you could go back to yourself in 2020 when you were crying, when they say calm down, what would you have told the Chinasa of 2020 if you could see the future like it is today? God is just rebranding you for something big. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I'm listening to you. Tell me, tell me what you would tell. Tell me, if you tell that to Chinasa, okay, oh, you can't see on the screen, right? Okay, all right. If you tell that to Chinasa, what would Chinasa say back to you? You're lying. You said you're lying. What else would they have said to Chinasa? Just because they say, just give yourself time. Just be patient. Just be patient. What is the most important thing you'll have said to Chinasa? The reason I'm saying so is that, let me talk about, some, about depression. The moment you leave the place of depression, you look back and say, was that what was depressing me? I remember when Jam depressed me. You, you're laughing, but at something as simple as Jam. Like, what does that matter again? Nothing. The only thing is that once you're in the place of depression, it's very hot. It's like it's boiling hot. Give me the microphone. I want this girl to tell me why she's crying. M. I want to tell me why she's crying. Lady, look at me. I'm very spiritual. I feel drawn to people. And with that drawing, it's, that, it's, a, it's a spiritual thing for me. And there's something going on already in the spirit. So, you're going to take time, just be neutral, just be vulnerable, and tell me what's going on. What's going on? Um, okay, so, um, the last few months has been um, really difficult. What's your um, name? My name is Precious. Do you think that this moment is divine for you? 
Yes, because she was telling me I should speak. And I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. And why are you not going to do that? Um, I you, like, you, you, you like to bottle it up in your mind, right? Most of the time, yes. Yep. And just like right now, give us a very good story. Do you, you want, I want to ask, do you want to be healed? Or do you want to appear healed? It's a um, choice. Do you want to be healed? Or do you want to appear healed? Which of them? I want to be healed. Okay, so tell me. When she was speaking, she was like, um, she's been having, she had job issues. I had job issues, competition issues. I kind of still have them. And she said she was really angry at God. And um, about a month ago, I was in that space, really angry at God. How angry were you? Very angry. I literally wrote down a note in my phone, just saying things. Read it to me. <laughs> it's really long. Just, just, just read Maybe the, the middle. I won't go to hear you. Okay. Um, I said, I don't think you care about me or my life. Do you even understand how painful this is? How frustrating it is to finally be able to stop focusing and wallowing in what's not happening and actually try taking a step to move forward and then your trust back in nothingness. Do you really understand the emotions I feel and how exhausted I am? Because if you did, I don't think you would let me keep drowning. It's okay, take your time. I felt like I was drowning and I could not really tell no, keep anybody. Reading. Okay. I have prayed to you, cried, tried my best, but yet you have remained silent. What do you want from me? When will you be satisfied? Do you want me to lose everything before you decide it's okay? Please tell me because I'm struggling to understand the essence of it all. Explain how I'm supposed to come to you in the midst of all this, how I'm supposed to trust, how I'm supposed to believe in you and your love. You know, I spoke with a friend of mine um, during that period in... Why do you say these things? What, what made you say this? Okay, um, as of last year, August, I would say my life wasn't the way it was. I mean, I had a job, I had a house to live in, and um, September, my boyfriend then broke up with me out of the blue. Nothing happened. We just, he just said. He what did the breakup mean to you when your boyfriend broke up with you? It was difficult because at that point, it felt like I was losing a good thing in my life. You felt as if you were losing a good thing in your life. Yeah. And I needed that support desperately. So when it happened, I remember I cried and I called um, a mentor of mine and I was just crying on the phone and he said, where are you? I said I was at home and he's just... So when you lost your boyfriend, it was as if something that was good was gone from your life. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, before then... Have you lost a boyfriend before that time? Yes. And you felt the same way? Not really, no. Not really. So I is it true that every time you lose your boyfriend, something good is taken from your life? Not all the time, no. Not all the time. But this one was different. Yes. But the last one that broke up with you before this one, it was also painful when it broke up, wasn't it? It was, but I didn't feel it as much. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And um, just about, I think about two, three days before the breakup, I had just gotten a letter from the job I was working at that my contract had been terminated. So it was like really difficult. It was back to back. Yeah. I understand that. I don't know if you watched, were you here last Sunday? You watched last Sunday. I explained last Sunday, I said that sometimes what causes depression is not, and I'm going to show you in the scripture, it's not what happened, it's the pace. It's like everything just comes crumbling down. And you wonder, and, and because it comes crumbling down, it 
you can almost begin to think the wrong thing. Is that exactly how you felt? Exactly. Are you, are you in that place currently right now? It's a good thing to say yes. It's a good thing to say no. Yes. You are. I am. Okay, good. So, this guy that broke up with you, so, so you're depressed because of your job and the boyfriend? No, no, the boyfriend part is gone. Gone. Okay, yes. well, why are you depressed now? I think I'm, de I'm depressed right now because, one, I'm st I've, still, I've been looking for a job for a bit, so it's okay. been a bit difficult. Okay. And I've been having accommodation issues for, him for months, about two months. Okay. And... Days, so what did you sleep last night, just to know, with a friend? I was staying with my friend, yes. You were staying with your friend. But two weeks before that, I was in a private state. Like, it got so bad that I had to travel back home. Home. And um, I was starting a training in a tech career um, in Lagos. So the major thing is your job and the accommodation? Yes. Fantastic. And I needed to be So, so let me ask you a question. What's your name again? Precious. What, what are the good things happening in your life right now? Well, I would say um, I'm finally training in the tech course that I you wanted. To, I'm finally undergoing training. You're going to go into training in tech space? Yes. Great. I One. To. Number two? I needed a laptop for that training, and I got it out of the blue. Wow. Two laptop. Number three? Um, I, when I was sitting at the airport, practically stranded, didn't know where I was going to sleep, I messaged someone that I hadn't really, I didn't really have a good relationship with, and she just took me in, and she's been amazing since then. Three. <sighs> Let me tell you things to be grateful. Stand up. Hold the microphone. <laughs> You're not paralyzed. Oh, take some steps forward. You can walk. I want to ask you, you know some people have accommodation in Iaba Orthopedic Hospital. Do you want one there? No. But you want accommodation. Do you know how much they would trade to have what you have right now? Have you thought about that? You know, some people, if you go to Iaba Orthopedic Hospital, they put it on the bed. They put one, their leg on one top like this. You know, they're like, okay, please, I would rather walk free and have no place to stay than be in this place. Yes or no? Oh, wow. I want to ask you. Someone gave you a laptop. How many people in this place has someone ever given you a laptop before? Did you hear that? So, you're like, out of everybody, someone gave you a laptop. You don't know God loves you. I, yeah, I will tell you, I will tell you why you feel depressed. I understand why you feel depressed. And the reason why you feel depressed is simple. And people here will understand it. Because the press, the pressure always does something. It will make you focus on what is negative. You know, one of our pastors, Pastor George, how many people have you lost in the last one week? People have you lost in the last one week? Two weeks. What? Three people. He's lost three, three very close family friends. Uh, no, not family members in three weeks. So, you know, one of the that said to me that, oh, Pastor, Pastor feels down. And come, Pastor George, come, come, come. He's lost three people. You know, you can take the microphone here. Again. I just want to, you can stay beside her just because of, he's lost three people. And I didn't even know who he lost. And I just said to him when I came, you know, because, because we've not really spoken. And you know what I said to him? I said to him in a simple way. I said, I'm grateful that they were old and they were advanced. Is that not true? That's what you said. Tell me the age of the three of them. Um, one is 69. Yeah. The other one is 89. Yeah. But I'm not sure of the age of the third person. For approximation. I think, it was, I think it was in his 60s. In his 60s. And I said, nobody wants to die. 69 is 70. That's a bit old. And I said that, but the thing is that it's back to back. I said, you need to just step back. They are not losing people in their 20s and 30s and 40s. And the reason why I'm saying so is that there's a way depression. So just imagine the last person that died was the one that was 89. And when you heard that, you just collapsed. How did you? You just, yeah. The, 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 just imagine an 88 man. I'm not saying that it's rejoice. It will always be paying for. But someone that's 89 died. Question, is that not good death? Ah. A lot of people here, if they see 89, they will not mind. 
If my own father or mother saw 89, I'm sure they would not mind. They say, give me that one. Because both of them died way below 89. But I'm only saying to you that one common pattern of depression is that depression makes you see the negative or interpret the neutral in the negative. That's what I'm going to. You are either going to see the negative or interpret the neutral in the negative. Thank you. You can give it back to her. So my friend, so when all of these things happen, what do you tell yourself? Tell me what you do. Why is my life like this? God has forsaken me. Yeah, and I always tell myself, I cannot be going through all of this. It's too much. Yeah, it's too much. Let me tell you what I'll tell myself when all this is happening. I'll tell myself that what powerful story God is giving me to share with the world. Because God has given me a powerful story. Because when you go through all of these things and you do your tech X talk, by the time you are very successful, oh, see how you're smiling right now. You know, you, let me tell you how boring your TEDx talk would do if you don't have these stories. Your TEDx is like, oh yes, um, I thank, you, thank you so much. I went to Harvard and then my parents were rich billionaires. They sent me to Harvard and sent me to this. And they were like, oh wow, if you have that, why are you talking to us? You're privileged. But when you tell them that, guys, I was in Lagos, I didn't have a place to stay. And someone looks at you and be like, wow, this big tech girl, he's sharing the story. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm trying to imagine what the future you can tell the younger you right now. He's going to tell you that this is what makes you strong. This is what makes you better. Praise God. Think of 10 years time in a tech space. Where will you be? What will you be telling me? well known and I'll have a school to train other women. No, think of one day, one day, one day, one, day, one office. Yeah, yeah. Think of you, think of you leaving your house, driving to the office in 10 years time. You know, give me, what, what did you wear that day? Just think about it. What, what was your house? Was it Nigeria? Was it outside the country? Outside the country. Out, what, what state? What country was that? <laughs> London, the UK. It was in the UK. Wow. It was in London. Hey, what car were you driving? Was it Tesla? It was a Mercedes. Was it an S class or a C class or it was a S class? It was an S class. Wow, what were you wearing? Uh, were you were, were you formal or informal? Formal yellow dress with heels and a black handbag. <laughs> what was the designer? Was it designer's clothes? Was it bag? Was it shoe? Custom made. Custom made. Oh wow. That's right. Why are you smiling right now? You were crying before. Because now the future actually looks possible. You see what what depression does? Depression makes the future very blurry, makes it very negative, makes it very scary. That's why people that are depressed commit suicide. You know why? Because every time they think of the future, they see a bad picture. So they say, this future is not good to live for. Let's kill. And I'm saying that this is what you can do to help yourself and help your friends. So you can see yourself driving the street town of London. You're driving, you know, when you go to Canary Wharf, is your office in Canary Wharf or where, what part of London it is? Canary Wharf is where all the high rise buildings are in the UK. You, you know that. So what floor was your what was your office? Was it corner? Seventh floor. Seventh floor. It was a corner building, it was just in the corner. it was in the corner office overseeing. Oh wow. And and as soon as you walked in, you know, there was a chauffeur to pick up the car yeah. and the the reception in New York already and said, hey, Mrs. Thames, how are you? You know, <laughs> you know, as mean that you're married Mr. Thames, I don't know what that means, you know. <laughs> you know. And, and BBC is doing a story on you and be like, you came from a humble background in Nigeria. How did this survive? And when you look back, did you regret your background or your background added color to your story? Added color to my story. Oh, wow. So what is adding color to you? Why are you fighting it? It's just the way you see where you're going. You can have your seat. Praise God. (laughs) She reminds me so much of me in some ways. There was a time I thought that no one would ever listen to me. I thought that I would never do well in ministry. Practical life story. I (laughs) 
you know, I just struggled. When our church was young, we were trying to buy a fake keyboard and a drum set, fake China, because we couldn't afford the original. And it told them it was 120,000. And I came to our church and I raised the money, 120,000. And you will not believe this. I raised the money twice in the service. And I couldn't raise the money. Nobody would they have enough to buy the keyboard. I traveled to, our church was so broke when we printed flyers those days. You know, I used to print flyers. You know, normally you just give the flyer to a contractor and say, give me the flyers. We couldn't afford that, but we need flyers. So I learned the process of printing flyers. I will, went, I will go to the place where they sell paper, buy the paper. Then go to the place, so that is where digital, um, they call it color separation, where each color, some of you are too young to understand this, is divided. So it's plates, you will carry plates. I will print the plates. There was the no new machine that time, hog machine. I will carry the plates in Bariga, Shomolu. I will carry the plates. Carry it. Carry the plates, carry the paper. They will cut it so that they don't leave my work. I will sit down in, Bar in Shomolu for them to cut that paper. Then I will do it, bring it to the church, wear suits. And I encourage people. Meanwhile, my faith was struggling. But you know, let me tell you something. If you can stay on the lane of faith, it will turn out well. You're blessed to be in a church like this where someone can open up the backside of their story. Because everybody wants to be as if it's perfect, but it's not perfect. First Samuel chapter 30, I'm going to read this and I'm going to close. And I'm, everything I want to preach is what they've said. I, I brought my message out from their conversation, but you didn't realize that. But because of some of us that are very used to the style, I will read it and we'll take from first Samuel chapter 30. The Bible says in verse 3, and David, you know, I always thought about it. What about if I gave up? I always thought about this. I mean, I got there many times. I got there many, many times. I'm like, that's it. We'll not be here. Sometimes when the pressure is high, you are at the bridge of a breakthrough. Remember that today. First so much of the 30. So let's read verse 3. The Bible says, And David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burnt. So why was David depressed? It was burnt with fire, and their wives and their sons and daughters were taken captives. See, in that verse 3 already, there's a miracle. You know why? They burned the city with fire, but their sons and daughters were taken captive. I'm grateful they did not kill them. You know why? If they killed them, they could not be restored. What she didn't realize is that that computer you got was a sign from God that I'm with you. Listen to me, all of you that feel depressed. If you can look enough, there will be a sign from God that though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, that I'm with you. I'm telling you, if you want to be honest, you will, you will see that something will just happen. Someone will just give you money. Ah. Someone will just send you, but nobody will send you a text. All those things that you thought were nothing are divine orchestration to tell you that this will not take you out. I'm with you. This in itself is a powerful miracle. The reason why is that if they had killed them, what would have happened? They won't be restored. So, the testimonies are, ah, Shabit, they took them away. They can bring them back. But if they had killed them, they won't be restored. You know what I'm saying? So, in your dark season, look around you and say, what is God doing? That you've, oh my God. Will you receive this? Pastors, will you help me receive this? Something I read in the Bible. In John, Jesus Christ went to a pool of Bethesda. Bethesda had a motive that was sick. Yes or no? We don't remember the story. Yes or no? Yes, Bible says in Bethesda, a multitude of people were sick. Jesus Christ got to a man that was been sick for 30 and 80 years and heals him. Do you know what I noticed? The scripture did not focus on others that were not healed. The scripture focused on who was healed. Is it that the Holy Ghost is telling us how to think that keep your focus on what God is doing, not what's undone? Keep your focus on what on what God 
God is doing, not what is undone. The reason why you get depressed is this. You keep your focus on what is undone, not what God is doing. Do you remember? In fact, if you don't read the story well, you would, you would ultimately think that Jesus Christ healed everybody or the man was the only person at the pool of Bethesda. But at the pool of Bethesda, the Bible said there was a multitude. Multitude means there must be at least 5,000 people there. And Jesus healed one. And the Holy Spirit, through the scriptures, focused our attention on just one person. What about the 4,999? It was almost as if they did not exist. I know that you don't have a job, but you have good health. Thank God for that. I know that you don't have money, but you have a house. Thank God for that. I know that you don't have children, but you are married. Thank God for that. I know you are not dating, but people are asking you, thank God for that. Learn and train yourself to focus on what God has done, not what is undone. You will have a whole different life. I have a personal story from that. I said praying for the sick quite a while ago. Quite a while. But after some time, I stopped praying for the sick. I had a lot of reasons why I told myself. But one of the reasons that affected me was that as I prayed for the sick, one or two people would get up and walk on the wheelchair. But there were eight of them on the wheelchair. What about the remaining six? I used to go with the pain of the remaining six. I used to say, ah. So, and, and people say, Pastor, I brought this, I brought that. I, and I used to feel that pain a lot. You know what happened? The more I focused on the people that were not healed, the more I withdrew from praying for the sick, the more I said less result in praying for the sick. But you know what? At some point in my life, it's not some years ago, I made a change and I said, Lord, I'm sorry. I will focus on what you're doing. You know what, I, what happened? The moment I focused on what God began to do, I saw more increased cases of healings. I held more meetings. I became bolder. I saw more results. Why am I telling you this? Listen to me. Eh? If you choose, if you choose, this is a breakthrough. Listen up. If you choose, that no matter what is going wrong, I will look at what God is doing and begin to give thanks. You will notice that the things that are not done will be done. That is what Jesus Christ said. When he said, does anybody have bread? They said, a child has a bread, just six loaves. But what is this amongst the multitude? Jesus Christ said, that's the problem. You are focusing on what has not happened. He said, bring the fixed loaves. Let's give thanks and break it. As he broke it, miracle exploded. What I'm saying to you is this. Listen to what he says. He said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. He said, because thou art with me, what happened? Thy rod and thy staff. Did you notice what he said? He didn't say, I could see God. He saw God in two dimensions, in the rod and in the staff. So, look for what God is doing in your life. Begin to celebrate it. Begin to what? Celebrate it. Praise God. Let me stop there. We'll finish the rest next week. I'm telling you, look for what God is doing. Spire, stand up. This guy, when nobody knew him, he will come to this church. 6.30 he will be praying. He had no testimony to share. Guess what he shares with me every Sunday? Pastor, see what I brought to church. That's his testimony. And this is before God and man. He would say, ah, Pastor, I invited this one. That was his testimony. He was celebrating, inviting people. Someone even said, is he not thinking of his career? I said, let him serve God. The same mount he used to celebrate that he can invite people. But celebrate him right now. The first, the first song he wrote, he didn't go this viral. What was the first song again? What was that? What? I, tell me, yeah, which, boom, yeah. Uh -huh. So, I, I think the major thing was that maybe he got to show you either someone sang with you or maybe David don't play what, what something, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, David jumped on it. David jumped on it. It's not as if something blew. He still did not have cow. But you should have seen the way the testimony moved him. Some people are saying, uh, so 
the billings of what happened. How much did you make? If you cannot thank God for billing, you will not see, you will not get who is your guy. Yeah. So, he, you will see, when he did the billing song, he came to this stage to testify. Someone say, ah, what's, what's he testifying about? His life has not changed. This is easy. This is easy. They are still calling him for 50,000 dollars show. Continue. The more you know that you don't own yourself, and there's a force. Listen to what the Bible says. God said, the Bible says, God give it grace to the humble. It's not bone face that collects grace or cosmetics. It's a posture of humility. What's humility? Lord, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Genuinely, I'm grateful. Me, I'm grateful. I'm telling you, I don't take anything for granted. You know, every time people take me to a project, Father, I'm grateful that I have sons and daughters that can do this. I'm even grateful to be the pastor of such kind of people. I don't wait for big things. Everything is big. <laughs> Some of you wait for big things. Anything God does is big. Anything God does is big. Why? I couldn't do it by myself. Anything God does is big. Right. Mr. Big Man, until the contract is 1.2 billion, don't celebrate. Don't worry. We, if he give us contract of 120,000, we celebrate. Why? Anything God does is big. 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 Many of you have children you don't dedicate or do Thanksgiving. It's okay. Maybe it's because the children came easily. People are married like you for 10 years. They can't have a child after 10 IVFs. Anything God does is big. Because he didn't have to do it. It's a function of grace. Stand on your feet. Let's give him praise. Somebody say anything God does is big. Lift up your voice and bless his holy name everywhere. Bless his holy name everywhere. Bless his holy name everywhere. Lift up your voices and thank him. In a significant way, thank him. If you want to go on your knees, find a place to kneel down and thank him. We bring our thanksgiving today. We bring our thanksgiving today. We bring our thanksgiving today. Aniako, Pelito, Aniako, Polonte, Emeniko, Meneko, Prukokone, Krutike, Pako, Ramane, Kusha, Ekitruke, Telego, Robataya. May I never be ungrateful. Shani, Kuramataya, Dabrakata, Shkatele, Brokoto. Thank you for mercy and grace that found me. Thank you for mercy and grace that found me. Thank you for mercy and grace that lifted me. E pato ne kuvalosa, e ni draku to ne ratata, e Christo shavraso, e blando le broke, e lubroso vrate, alekete. Thank you for your mighty hand on NLP. Thank you on your mighty hand on Harvesters. Thank you for the Lekki Center. Thank you for the online church. Thank you for the NLP conferences. Thank you for the men in this church. Thank you for the women in this church. Thank you for the single. Thank you for the kids. Thank you for Thank you for those in credit employment. Thank you for business people. Thank you for the leaders. Thank you for the members. We do not take it for granted. It is a mighty hand of God walking. It's a mighty hand of God walking. It's a mighty hand of God walking. It's a mighty hand of God walking. So you be the glory of God. In Jesus. Name we pray. And Father, once again, thank you. That's all we have to say this evening. 